All right, so now thanks very much for explaining all the new regulations to us and they come in effect from May this year. Uh, the only thing that hasn't happened, Pavitra, like mutual funds, is that at least SEBI has not yet said exactly how much commission can you pay out, which yeah. is very strictly regulated and mandated in uh, mutual funds at least. Well, let's take this conversation forward. We have two guests joining in uh, and they are from the industry. Nishant Agrawal, Senior Managing Partner and Head of Investment Advisory at ASK Private Wealth, as well as Anshu Kapoor, President and Head Private equity at uh, Nuvama Asset Management. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. So we have someone representing the uh, the asset manager, the product manufacturer here, as well as someone who's representing, of course, the interests of the uh, end uh, client or the end investor. Uh, so let me start with you, Wanshu. Uh, does this, first of all, create any kind of, uh, you know, uh, a fear in the minds of the AIF world that there could be a lot of regulation here? As I said, they've not yet, uh, you know, they've stopped short uh, from saying how much commission can you charge, but they are saying direct plans have to come in, commission at least in some category of funds has to move to a trail model. Your first thoughts? Hi, yes, Surabhi. Um, yes, I think uh, our view is that any regulation that is good for the investor is good for the industry. So I think we welcome uh, these changes. The regulation, the framework is progressive and pro proactive. It does provide for transparency and transparency in any industry is great. It also allows product selection choice to be made purely on merit and not on distribution fee. So that, that's a welcome step. And finally, it does recognize the fact that there are some categories in, in the AIF category which may need a little bit more flexibility to pay out a little bit higher upfront to progress or spur the growth of the category. So I think these are all welcome changes we wholeheartedly support these and we'll go into more details as to where there could have been a little bit more from an industry point of view, but overall very, very positive. Okay, Anshu, just to follow up, I mean, uh, that's a good, I think, in principle opening statement uh, that, that you're making, you're in agreement with the way the regulations have come about. But help us get into the granularity, again, from uh, the perspective of someone who's managing an alternate investment fund, uh, where does this start to pinch? Because in category three funds now, you can't give any upfront commissions at all. So will it sort of pinch the growth of the category? And again, even category one, category two, uh, you can only give upfront uh, up to one third, 33%. Right. Yeah, so we can go into detail, uh, Surbhi. So as, as far as category three is concerned, the regulator is very clearly saying that there should be no kind of differentiation in similar kind of products. The choice of vehicle should be independent or should be paid purely based on merit. What it means is that if you're buying a long only product, if you buy it in an AIF category three, or you buy in mutual fund or in a PMS, the distribution fee should have the same logic and which is a welcome move, uh, which kind of makes sure that the clients are offered products purely on performance. So a lot of long only products that were offered on category three, if they will do well, is when the distributor will pick them up now. So it kind of levels the playing field across vehicles for long only products. There are small category of products, uh, which are hedge funds or long shot, which are also clubbed into that, but that, that that's a, anyways are differentiated products. So from that point of uh, view, it is a great thing. As far as category one and two is concerned, uh, there is some more flexibility given by the regulator on structuring the distribution fee, which which uh, states that a little bit higher upfront can be paid. It's a welcome move. Uh, the fact that these are all largely seven to 10 year products, closed ended, our asset classes like private equity, venture debt, uh, private credit, real estate and all, which are anyways hard or hard for investors to access or inaccessible and are a little bit more complex to explain uh, from a sales point of view. So therefore, it's a, it's a welcome move. The, uh, the regulator does recognize the fact that this category uh, needs some help to spur the growth. It's a more involved sales process. Uh, my view, personal view would have been yeah. that a lot more structuring, uh, flexibility in structuring would help this category. It's a very small category per se. Hmm. Um, you know, all ca three categories put together. 
Uh, okay, seems like we have some trouble with that. We are going to try to reconnect. But in the meantime, Nishant, let me get you in also on this uh, for, you know, the other perspective as well. Sebi had first announced this on PMS, so a lot of the distribution efforts moved to AIFs. Now, with this coming into AIFs, tell us from a private wealth player perspective, how much of a negative is this? Because, I mean, of course, anyone who is big in the private wealth space will be affected, right, since, the, since it is affecting your commission so directly. Sure. So um, I would say private wealth offers services to clients on two platforms. One is the distribution or MFD platform and second is an investment advisory platform. I think this is a very, very positive news for investment advisory business or investment advisory platform because for a long time EIF was the only category left where there was no direct plan available to clients who were paying fees to uh, their wealth advisor or wealth manager. Uh, earlier it was mutual funds followed by PMS. And only EIFs were left, which only had regular plan. And like uh, you mentioned, investor was paying double fees. First, the full fees on the plan, and then the advisory fee to the advisor. Now, with an option of direct plan being available, there will be a resurgence of a lot of investors coming towards investment advisor and all product being available on direct plan. So the platform has been neutralized. That's, that's uh, the differentiation which has gone for investor, and it's a very, very good change. I would say even for the distribution platform, the impact may not be as big as it is thought. Uh, a lot of this was already being planned by asking for trail commission even when upfront was available. So to service the client over a long period of product, five years, six years, seven years, you need to be involved in the product. And uh, us and many other players in the market were anyways preferring a part upfront and part distribution commission when we were offering EIF to investors. So this is in line with that. Lastly, on category three AIF, uh, in the medium to long term, it might turn out to be better for wealth manager because please understand the upfront commission was only paid on commitment amount which the investor commits to an AIF, let's say category three. However, when the trail commission comes in play, you get the trail commission based on the NAV of the product or market value of the product. Typically, if we expect a 15% growth in a long only equity product every year, then the value of the investment grows from 100 to almost 150 over a three year period. So your trail also gets increased like customer expenses increases on commitment uh, on market value. Similarly, the trail goes up. So it's a short term negative impact on the part of the fees, but a very, very welcome and positive change for investor and the category over medium to long term. Mm, OK, got that. Uh, stay on Ishant. We have more questions for you. We'll get into a very quick break and continue this <laughs> conversation on the other side. Welcome back. You're with us on Trading Hour and we are discussing the impact of SEBI's latest recommendations for AIFs or alternate investment funds. These new regulations kick in from May this year. Uh, Nishant, to get back to the conversation, help us with the numbers and the data because the industry is really opaque and we don't have sort of, you know, quarterly or monthly listings. Uh, what would be the total size across category one, category two and category three? Which category is the biggest? And uh, are there a lot of people coming through the direct channel at all? Uh, isn't it all or most uh, most of it distributor-led or maybe advisor-led? And again, what's the breakup between pure advisory and distribution? Sure. So basically, uh, between category one, two, and three put together, the industry is around six, six, seven lakh odd crores. Uh, but the industry can be broken into three buckets. One is all the institutions, the insurance company, the banks, the global funds, which comes directly through fund managers contact and there is no distributor or domestic advisor which is involved. So that's a category which will get affected because currently they pay only the one fee plan which is available in all these AIFs. And now when the direct plan are there, the AIF manager might be required to offer the direct plan to these institutions which come directly to these advisors. We have to see how that evolves. The second category is the HNIs and domestic uh, investors. There also there are two, uh, uh, I would say, categories by which the investor come in, one through an intermediary and one directly to the fund manager. The intermediary business is driven between distribution and investment advisor. And I would say currently more than 90% of the business is under distribution fee led business. Only 10% is investment advisory, very, very uh, broadly speaking, because there was a kind of I would say differentiated fee structure and there was a double fee. The AIF was not moving clearly into investment advisory. 
So three categories, institution business will impact the earning for fund managers because those institutions will not ask for direct plan. And under the non-institutional business, it will be a mix of distribution and advisory. And it will be more of advisors who will be recommending direct plan instead of distribution plan going forward. Hmm. All right, got that. Uh, just a little bit more of a zoomed out question on what we could see in the next few days. Uh, Anshu, coming to you now, do you think up until May 1st when this you know, actually comes into play and you do have to follow these new rules, do you think we're likely to see a big rush into this category just on account of you know, a, a lot of these private wealth players pushing the AIF harder? Well, it's unlikely. Uh, these are very involved sales process products. So it's unlikely that suddenly we'll see a big rush. Um, I think uh, overall this category is still very, very small. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be done for awareness, information and education. And anyways, total number of investors are very small per se. So it is not a widely distributed product. So I'm, I'm not, I don't think there'll be a flurry of activity over the next 20 days. Gentlemen, before we wrap up, I come to the point uh, from where I began. Right now, there is absolutely no talk of regulating commissions in terms of how much money can be paid out. That's an entirely market-driven, industry-driven process. Uh, so leave us with some thoughts, Anshu. You know, what are ballpark commissions like? And will this move result in uh, commissions coming down at all, commissions going up? What happens? So maybe uh, I can answer this in two parts. Surbhi, if it's okay, I don't know because I got uh, dropped off. Um, I actually wanted to make a point on the direct plan first. Uh, the, the point is that today, AIFs cannot be marketed or promoted extensively. And therefore, my view or suggestion to the regulator is that if we are introducing a direct plan and it's a step in the right direction, also help us uh, create tools for investors to find analyze and evaluate these products. I think that that will help the industry per se. Coming to your question on the point of whether, you know, the, the, the total payouts and all will increase or decrease, I don't think much will change. Uh, it's just that uh, the total economics will remain mostly largely the same. So let's say if it's a five to seven year product and the total fee pool, management fee is 8%. And if about half is being shared with the distributor, the, the payout uh, terms will remain the same, as in, let's say, if half is paid for 4% is shared with the distributor, now it's being shared with the trail model or as per the category. So in my view is that not much will change from a total economics point of view. But I think overall confidence of the customer will grow and therefore overall revenue pool for this asset class will increase. Okay. All right. Uh, got that. Gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, making sense of these new regulations for us. And of course, we'll touch base with you again once they're rolled out and see how industry and investors are adapting to the new normal. Thank you for joining in. Well, Pavitra, with that, I guess uh, it's time for us to leave as well. Let's do that. We're going to wind down. The market has come off a little bit, I have to say, and that's largely on account of what's happening with big tech, right, ahead of the earnings season starting. But that's all on this edition of Trading R. You guys stay tuned. Halftime report up next.